everybody. Good morning. It's always turn on the camera and see how, how we look today. How we look. <laughs> how many of you out there are camera ready this morning? <laughs> we are. Yes. Good morning. Hey, look. I have a K cup and you have a J cup. Awesome. Aww. High quality Sunday morning broadcast. Hey, I hope you enjoyed our... Big Top Kids, Big Top Kids Theater. So some of our, our homestead kiddos uh, took some time to do their own version of Toy Box Theater and were amazing. Mm -hmm. My goodness, those kids are awesome. So we're going to show that again at the end of the service in case you missed it at the beginning. So we're very proud of them. And we've got kids that are going to do the next few weeks too. They've been working on it. If you'd like to get involved with your kids or have your kids get involved or do your own Toy Box Theater and pretend you're a kid, <gasps> Um, maybe we should have an adult yes, version. Yes, an adult version. That's a, a great A version for idea. adults. Probably sounds bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Stephanie King is sending out all the, all the stories that we're going to have for the next few weeks. Uh, so you can jump, jump on in. <laughs> okay. Regrouping. Regrouping. So we hope you had a great week. Um, we miss you. We miss seeing each other. But I hope that you are checking in with each other, taking care of each other. Um, you know, we're just going to keep moving along in this little season that we're in. But we want you to know you're not alone. You've got us. We're your family. And we are here for whatever you need. So we've been praying for you, been praying for your families. And if there's anything that we can help you with, we want you to make sure you reach out. So we're going to start the morning. We've got some worship from the kids, and then we've got worship, and then a message, and then we'll be back again later. And we have our own toy theater yes. video from the Big Top Kids Toy Theater Department. Department. The officially sanctioned one. That'll be uh, right at the beginning of the message. Yes, just in um, case. And then we'll be back at the end for some uh, more fun, excitement, and some announcements. So... Uh, Thanks for joining us. If you're if you're just perusing the Facebook page today and you uh, stumbled upon this, we are Homestead Community Church. We're glad that you joined us. We're a church community in Farmington, and uh, we are uh, we would love to welcome you. And if you're looking for a church family to be a part of and you live in the area, we'd love to have you join us whenever we're allowed to leave the house <laughs> again. Awesome. Okay. Here is the kids' worship department. We got lots of departments. We do. The spark, the spark caught fire in my heart, and I can see it lighting up the dark, and now it's burning brighter than ever. It's down deep in my soul, the fire burning out of control. It's love, and I gotta let it show. It's changing my world for the better. So raise one hand high, throw your light in the sky. We're gonna keep it shining forever.
change and it starts with me. One yeah. head high. Feel your light in the sky. We're gonna keep it shining forever. Oh, oh, oh. it's brightest when we're shining together. This little light.
find our stability, our hope, our confidence, our trust in you today. And Father, that that confidence would then translate into us reaching out to those around me, Lord, that we're so full of you, so full of your spirit, that Lord, we don't hesitate to pour out to others, God. That is, that's our prayer today. So Lord, I pray that you would fill every person listening right that they're feeling dry and weary. God, fill every crack. Lord, fill every gap. We thank you, Jesus, that you are the solid foundation that we can build our lives on today. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, Homestead Church. Thanks for joining us online today. We hope you're doing well. Um, and that you've had a wonderful week. Um, We're glad you're with us today. We are going to continue in part two of a series that Christy started last week called The Adventures of Paul. Um, And just to get you caught up a little bit, this series is uh, found in the book of Acts. And the book of Acts, if you are new to the Bible in in the New Testament, is after the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Um, This is after the life and ministry of Jesus. So after he taught with his disciples after Jesus was crucified, resurrected, and ascended to heaven. The book of Acts is when the disciples take the teachings of Jesus and start telling people. And it's the beginnings of the Christian church. This is what the book of Acts really is all about. Paul starts out in the book of Acts, and this is what we learned last week, um, as Saul. He was a Roman citizen, a religious ruler, opposed to this new Christian faith opposed to the disciples of Jesus Christ, and he had them persecuted, even many of them killed and arrested. But Jesus gets a hold of him. Jesus appears to Paul on the road to Damascus. Paul is radically saved. His life is turned around, and he goes from chief persecutor of the Christians to now preaching the gospel, writing much of the New Testament, traveling around, planting churches, Um, ministering to people, gives the rest of his life for the work of the gospel. What a transformation. This is what we talked about last week. Today we're going to do part two of that. And here's what I want us to get. As we look at different stories, different adventures that Paul was on, I want us to get this. And I want you to be thinking about this in terms of your life. This idea of a faith adventure, a God adventure, this is what God has for you. This is not just reserved for people whose names are written in the pages of Scripture. Not just for the disciples or the apostles or the heroes in the Old Testament. And today it's not just reserved for the people who work full-time at a church who are the professional ministers. This is what God has for you. When you give your heart to him, God says, okay, let's go. I have a life for you. I have an adventure for you. You're going to go tell people about Jesus. It might be traveling around the world like Paul. It might be just ministering in your community, reaching, meeting needs in your neighborhood, preaching in your workplace. It might be changing lives of those in the community that you are already in. But this is what God has for you. This is what God wants for you. A life that you will look back and say, wow, I'm so glad I got to be a part of that. My personality is such where I love moments where it's a unique day, where I'll find myself maybe traveling in another country or meeting somebody new or having an experience that was unexpected, and I'll say, I'm so glad I got to experience that. I can't believe I got to experience that. In a way, it's almost like me saying, this is going to be a great memory. I'm going to remember this, or this is going to be a great story to tell. Um, for me, this, I think, is part of my growing up, where I grew up in a family that we would always take family trips and something would always go wrong. And if you've experienced that in your family, maybe growing up as a kid, what did your parents say when the car broke down or when you had to hitchhike to a a dive motel somewhere in Saskatchewan? Maybe that was just me. Um, Your parents would say, well, looks like we're having an adventure, right? We're making memories. That was their way of saying, I don't know what they were trying to say. I think that was their way of like smoke and mirrors. Don't look at the disaster. Yay, memories, adventure. Um, But there's something deep in me. Did you ever hear that from your parents? There's something deep in me that I love moments like that. Even when it's a total, something like did not go as planned at all. I'll think, 
was a great experience. I'm so glad I got to experience that. Today, as we look at Acts chapter 16, Paul is in his second missionary journey. He is having an amazing adventure. This chapter, we're going to kind of go through the whole chapter. There's so many moments where God is doing great things, so many ups and downs. And I just have this feeling like Paul, after this day, after these days in Acts chapter 16, just looks back and says, man, that was crazy. I'm so glad I get to be a part of that. I want you to have that framework as we read this story, that this is the life, the ups and the downs, this faith adventure that God wants for you, where you'll look back and say, I'm so glad I got to be a part of that. I'm so glad I got to experience that. Christy and I have that with this church, with Homestead Church. So often we'll look at each other when in the midst of God is changing somebody's life or God is using us to to lead a team of people to meet needs in our community where we'll say, I'm so glad we get to be a part of this. Even this building I'm in right now, which technically I'm only supposed to be doing construction, so in a moment when you watch a video, I'm going to go sand something. Um, Even in this building, it's had its ups and downs. But most often, I walk around and I think, look at what I get to be a part of. This is pretty great. This is an adventure. Acts chapter 16. Paul's on his second missionary journey. He's traveling around the region, kind of around Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria. He's traveling with Silas. And in this story, in this chapter, are several great moments which we are going to get illustrated to us by the wonderful people in the Big Top Kids Toy Theater Department. Enjoy this. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Big Top Kids Toy Theater. Today, we are learning about another one of the The Adventures of Paul. Today's story is found in Acts chapter 16. Paul and his companion Silas were traveling throughout Judea and Samaria. One night, Paul had a vision while they were asleep. And in that vision, there was a man from Macedonia saying, Hey, Paul and Silas, come to Macedonia and help us. Well, Paul woke up the next day and said, Silas, I had a vision last night. And we need to go right now to Macedonia. And Silas said, where's that? And Paul said, right here on this map. And Silas said, great. And so that day, they got in a boat and they set sail across the Mediterranean to the nation of Macedonia. Oh, we were setting sail on the Mediterranean, going to Macedonia. Mm-mm-mm. There, once they got to Macedonia, they met a woman named Lydia. Hi! And she was someone who knew about God but had never heard about Jesus. And so Paul and Silas came up to her and told Lydia about Jesus. And she became the first believer in the whole continent of Europe. And many of her friends became believers as well. I want to believe. Look, I want to believe too. I love Jesus. This is great news. But also, in the town there was a slave girl who was possessed by an evil spirit. And this evil spirit was distracting the people from the message of Paul and Silas. Hey, don't listen to them! Hey, they don't know what they're talking about! Hey, don't look over there! Look over here! Sit! And finally, Paul got so upset, and he said, I've had enough of this distraction. You come out of her right now in the name of Jesus. And at that moment, the evil spirit left the girl, and she was set free. But the owner of the slave girl was very upset with Paul and Silas. So he got all his friends together, and he brought Paul and Silas in front of the chief magistrates and rulers and said, these men are causing a distraction in our town. And so the the ruler said, well, that's no good. And he ordered that Paul and Silas be badly beaten and thrown in prison. And that's what happened, and Paul and Silas were thrown into prison. And chains put around their neck, and they were put under the guard 
of the meanest jailer in Macedonia. Well, that night, while in prison, rather than complaining, Paul and Silas began to sing and worship. Spirit be here in my faith will be made all the same, and my trust will be our orders in the presence of my Savior. All the other prisoners could hear them worshiping. I love that song. That's my favorite worship artist. Elevation Church is my favorite too. And all the other prisoners could hear them. And while they were singing, a great earthquake came and shook the prison. And all the doors flew open and all the chains came off. And the main jailer, the next morning when he woke up, he saw that all the doors had been opened and all the chains had come off and he thought all the prisoners had escaped. And he said, oh no, I'm the meanest jailer in Macedonia and I let all these prisoners escape under my watch. And all of a sudden, Paul said, wait, Mr. Jailer, ouch, it's me, we're all still here. And the jailer was so impressed that he said, I want you to tell me about Jesus. And so Paul and Silas told the jailer about Jesus and he became a Christian that day. Not only him, but his whole household as well. This is awesome, so awesome. And that day they were baptized as well. The end. All right, welcome back. Hope you enjoyed that. We're gonna start with verse nine and 10 of Acts chapter 16. Please grab a Bible or turn in your Bible, Acts chapter 16, starting in verse nine. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, come to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. God appears to Paul in a vision. Well, I guess God didn't. God gave Paul a vision of a man of Macedonia, saying, come over here, help us. God uses that moment to drastically change course of Paul and Silas, and also to drastically expand the vision and the mission of Paul and Silas. I'm sure they had moments where they were thinking, oh, we're just going to travel around Jerusalem and we're going to tell people about Jesus here. And all of a sudden God says, oh, you thought this was all you were going to do? I got something different in mind for your life. This is when God reveals that change of direction for Paul and Silas. God will do that in your life. As you allow him to rule in your life, there's going to be moments where he says, yeah, we're going to change direction a little bit. It might be career. It might be geographically. It might be something where you are a part of something and you thought, I would have never imagined I was going to be a part of this. God has a way of in a moment saying, yeah, we're going to send you this way. Your life is now going to be about this. And you're going to look back and you're saying, I'm so glad I listened to God when he wanted to direct me over there. So Paul and Silas travel to Macedonia. And we see what happens in Macedonia in verse 14. It says this. As they were preaching the gospel in Macedonia, which would be modern day Greece around that part of the world. One of those listening to them was a woman from the city of Thyatira named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth. So a dealer in purple cloth, what that means is this would have been their way of saying expensive cloth. Purple cloth was expensive. There's a name for it. I can't remember what it was. But this is another way of saying she was a prominent, wealthy businesswoman. It's not like she just had an aversion to all the other colors and said, I'm only dealing in purple, folks. Purple's all I got. Uh, one of those, a lady named Lydia dealing in purple cloth, a purple cloth dealer. She was a worshiper of God. The Lord opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. When she and the members of her household were baptized, she invited us to her home. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my house, and she persuaded us. So there's this moment where Paul and Silas preach the gospel to this lady named Lydia. 
and says she was a worshiper of God, but she responded to their message. Other translation says she was a seeker of God, but didn't know anything about Jesus. We see this in our world today, where people are open to spiritual things. People are seeking after spiritual things. They just don't know it's about Jesus. God is stirring the hearts of people where they are seeking. This is what God was doing in Lydia. She was seeking. She just didn't know what she was seeking. And when Paul and Silas tell her about Jesus, she says, that's it. That's what I've been seeking. This is what can happen in your life as you talk to people. You have no idea what God is already stirring in their hearts where they're seeking after something. And you're going to tell them about your life with Jesus and they're going to say, that is it. That is what I've been seeking after. This is what happens with Lydia. And not just Lydia. Many of her friends come. They gather around. They all get saved. Lydia's household gets saved. They come over to their house. This is like the start of a church. So a couple of things I want to mention. One is which the God is already stirring. The second is this. This is the first convert on the continent of Europe. This is the first convert in Europe. This is the first church, the first Christian church, first gathering on the continent of Europe. Now for us in this part of the world, that's a big deal because the Christian church in Europe would spread throughout Europe for centuries. And then in the 16th century, as colonists began to come over to America, they brought Christianity with them and Christianity spread throughout America. So the reason we are here is because of this conversion of Lydia. Our spiritual heritage goes back to this moment in Acts chapter 16. The point being this, you never know the ripple effects of what God is going to do through your life, of this God adventure, this faith adventure. You may think you're just sharing your faith with somebody, but what you don't know is that God has been stirring something in them, and it's not just going to be them. It's going to be their whole household, and then that's going to spread and change a community, change a nation change generations. This is how God works. This is what we get to be a part of in this faith adventure that God has for you and for me. You never know what he's going to do. Well, right after this, an interesting thing happens. Already, this is adventure enough, right? Already, that's a pretty good day. If you're like, yeah, we were, we were traveling around Judea, we saw a vision. We set sail to a whole other continent we met these people, they got saved, their house got saved, their friends got saved, all of a sudden there's a church there. That's one where you can say, man, that's a pretty great day. That's quite an adventure. Well, it continues. We're just getting started. Verse 16 of Acts 16, it says this. Once, when we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a female slave who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune-telling. She followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, These men are the servants of the Most High God who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul became so annoyed, he turned around and said to the Spirit, In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. And at that moment, the Spirit left her. When her owners realized their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. So there are several things in here. First is this. They meet this slave girl who has a spirit which enables her to be a fortune teller. Um, in other translations, it's, it's referred to as a spirit of divination or witchcraft, an evil spirit. Because um, when you read this, what the slave girl is shouting is, these men are servants of the Most High God proclaiming the way to salvation. You don't really think it's a bad thing. But yet, Paul is able to discern the spirits. Paul recognizes this is not of God. Just because it's a spiritual thing doesn't mean it's of God. If you are deep into spiritual things and fortune-telling and all those things, doesn't mean it's of God. In fact, it's probably not of God. We need to be on guard and mindful of what spiritual things we are allowing into our life. But Paul recognizes, even though she's saying something that sounds good, it is not of God. And even other than that, it's just really annoying and distracting. 
Imagine trying to do the work where you're preaching the gospel and you have someone following you around shouting things. It would be like if you were trying to talk to people downtown and you had one of those angry street preachers going around saying, death and condemnation is coming. You'd be like, dude, I'm trying to have a conversation here and you're causing a disruption. This is kind of what I see happening here. So Paul causes the evil spirit to leave in the name of Jesus. And this girl's life is transformed. But all of a sudden, they're dragged down in front of the, the rulers. And they are ordered to be beaten severely and thrown in prison. This happens. All of this happens in the course of a day. What strikes me is there is a very quick turnaround from great mountaintop experience Vision of a man from Macedonia, Lydia getting saved, church started, slave girl, evil spirit cast out. We are riding high for the Lord, friends. And within hours of casting this spirit out of this girl, they're dragged before the rulers. They are beaten up severely and thrown in prison. That's a quick drop-off. That's the life of faith you feel like, man, life dropped off a cliff rather quickly. So what we see there through this is this. The adventure of Paul was not all smooth sailing. It wasn't all great victories. It wasn't easy. There was a quick turnaround from mountaintop to the valley. Have you ever experienced something like that in your life? Have you ever experienced the quick drop off where you were like, man, things are going, things are going great. Marriage is great. Family's great. I'm living for God. I feel like my prayers are being answered. I, I can hear the voice of God. I'm totally diving into the word. I'm sharing my faith. And all of a sudden, within a day, an hour, even a phone call or a conversation, it feels like the bottom drops out. And you're like, how did we get here? God, I've been living for you. I would imagine that there was moments where Paul and Silas, if it were me, I would have been saying, what? I went to Macedonia. I'm preaching the gospel. Now I'm beaten up and thrown in prison. What's going on, <laughs> right? Moments like that. Have you ever experienced that? Where something has derailed your faith? A phone call, a doctor's visit, a conversation. We see that life is a mix of all of these seasons, good and bad. Faith in God is a mixture of good and bad seasons in life. An adventure life with God is no different. And this is the one thing, or one of the things that people misunderstand about faith, is that it doesn't mean that all your problems go away. It doesn't make life all smooth and rainbows and bunnies. There are difficult seasons we walk through. And the reason that many people give up on faith is because they experience a, a prison in Macedonia season where they experience something where the bottom drops out and they think... I tried to live for God. I read my Bible and this still happened. What good is faith? It doesn't work. I tried that. It didn't work. Bad, thought, bad stuff still happened to me. The point is this. What we see in Paul and Silas and what we will see in our life is a difficult season is either going to define your faith or it's going to deflate your faith. And what we see in Paul and Silas was a great faith-building moment as they were in prison in Macedonia. We see it in verse 25. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoner, prisoners were listening to them. Singing and praising? You read that and you're like, what? How can that be? Singing and praising? If it were me, let me ask you, what would your reaction be in that moment? You've just been beaten up and thrown in prison. I imagine many of us would be more complaining, more demanding justice, um, get me the governor on the phone sort of thing. I, you know, I demand to be set free right now. Um, or at best, it would be we would be praying, but our prayers would be along the lines of, God, get me out of here. Do your thing, God. I need you. I need you to get me out of here. And then if we get delivered from prison, then, God, I'll be happy to praise your name and sing all the live long day. But what we see of Paul and Silas is they're praising before God does anything. They're singing hymns of praise in the midst of the dark season. It's like they're saying, I don't need God to show how awesome he is for me to declare how awesome he is. I'm going to do it right now. In fact, that's what's going to set my heart right, is declaring the goodness and the grace and the love 
of God, his awesomeness, the fact that he is worthy of praise, he is worthy of honor in any season. He is worthy of every time I get beat up and thrown in prison. He's worthy of every time I get misunderstood or stuff doesn't go my way. He's worthy in all of those seasons. This is what we see Paul doing. I love that it says at midnight. It's like it's, they're saying it's like at the darkest moment. The dead of night, beaten up in prison. They're singing praises to God. And I love that it says in the other prisoners heard them. Everybody in that prison could hear them singing. Everybody could hear the praises of God. This is a, this is a defiant faith moment for Paul and Silas. This is a moment where their faith causes them to just kind of have a strong backbone and say, you can do whatever you want to me. I'm going to praise God. He is worthy no matter what. This is why we sing in church. If you imagine, if you imagine someday when we'll be allowed to gather together in this room and sing as a church, let's imagine there's 200 people in this room and we're singing songs and hymns of praise to our God. Of those 200 people, there are 200 different life circumstances. Some are on the mountaintop rejoicing because God just seems so close to them. Some are in the valley because they have had the call from the doctor or the marriage has fallen apart or the kids are struggling or they're sick or finances are a disaster. In this coronavirus season, we are in a season where, yeah, there's stress. There's stress going on. But in that moment, with all the different circumstances, why we sing is because we put the declaration of God's awesomeness, his power, his goodness, his faithfulness, we just declare it as a way of saying, doesn't matter how good or bad life is, you are worthy. This is a defiant faith. This is a rigid, strong, secure faith. This is what we see in Paul and Silas. And I love that the other prisoners were listening to them. Everyone could hear them. And what that says is this. Your faith in the difficult seasons has a captive audience. Your faith in the difficult seasons, your faith in this corona season, has an audience. There are a lot of people scared. And even down the road when life returns to normal, there's going to be times where we go through difficult seasons and how you respond in faith and praise will have an audience. People who also are going through similar struggles are going to say, oh, well, look at what faith does for them. If you're in the midst of a difficult season and you're complaining and griping as loud as anybody else, they're just going to look at you and say, well, what good does faith do? I want us to have a defiant heart of praise, a faith that is strong, what we see in Paul and Silas, even when it's midnight in the Macedonian prison. That's what faith does for us. Amen? Just seeing if I could hear an amen. Verse 26. Something great happens next. Verse 26. Suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up. When he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. In all honesty, if I'm in the prison and the chains fall off and the doors open, I'm seeing that as my invitation to get on out of there. But that's not what happened. In that moment, Paul shouted, Don't harm yourself. We are all here. The jailer called for the lights rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to get saved? Notice what happened in that moment. The praises of God in the midst of the prison season caused circumstances to change. Chains fell off. Prison doors flew open. And not just those of Paul and Silas. Everyone in the prison. Your faith is going to have a ripple effect impact on the world around you, on your family, on your community. Just see, when, when the praises of God go up in the midst of a dark circumstance, there's more lives that are affected for the good than just yours. This is what we see. Everybody's chains fell off. And the guard and his whole family were saved and baptized that day. Having this defiant faith this heart of worship and praise does not, does not just benefit you. It brings life and freedom to those around you. And what we see is Paul and Silas took every opportunity to share their faith in Jesus Christ. 
I'm sure this guard had not been kind to them leading up to that moment. They didn't even take that opportunity to run out of the prison. They saw this as an opportunity to share about Jesus. Maybe the reason God has us in this prison is to share our faith with those in this prison. That's what I get from the story. Parents, you want to know the best thing you can do for your household and your family? Is to have a heart of faith and worship. To let your kids hear you declaring the praises of God. That doesn't bring life to you only. It brings life to everyone around you. So as we wrap up, this defiant faith, this ability to be in prison and yet be singing the praises to God, that heart of worship no matter what, that doesn't just happen. It doesn't just appear when you're in the prison. It needs to be learned. It needs to be developed. It needs to be fostered. It needs to grow. And this happens now. This is what we can be doing now, is learning how to declare the praises and the goodness of God no matter what. This is something we can learn in the normal seasons of life so that when we are in the prison in Macedonia at midnight, what we've learned how to do will come out. We'll declare the praises of God. So that when you're beaten, when you're down, when life feels like it's fallen off the cliff, that's not going to be the first time you're looking for, oh, where's my faith? You've grown that. You've developed that. You've walked with God consistently so that it is strong, defiant, stand up straight, declare the praises of God kind of faith. I want all of us to have that life, that adventure life, that defiant faith, where we can just say, God, look at what I get to be a part of. I don't want us to have to look well into the past to find our last great adventure. God wants your best days to be these days, your most adventurous days to be these days. Let's close in prayer. Dear Jesus, we thank you for this day. And I want you to know that we are so thankful that you have called us to live this adventure, to live in this defiant faith, to declare the praises of you in every season. And God, you're going to use that not just to benefit us, not just to benefit our household, but to benefit our communities, our schools, our workplaces, to benefit our nation. You may be calling people to travel around the world like you called Paul and Silas. Lord, whatever it is, we honor you. Everything, every good situation and bad situation we walk through, you are worthy of praise and honor in all of it. And we want to live a life of praise to you, a life of great steps of faith and adventure. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I thought we could sing that song we did earlier as I awkwardly transitioned to the guitar. Song that Christy led earlier, God, you're so good, you're so good to me. And as we sing it, I want you to sing those simple words, God, you're so good, you're so good to me. There's never been anyone like you. And I want you to declare the goodness of God, even in the midst of a dark season, before you see him move, but just to declare, God, you're good, you're worthy in every season. God, you're so good.
take a second and pray together. Lord, I just, I lift up, I lift up all my friends today, Lord. We just come to you, Lord, knowing that some are in the valley, some are, are feeling optimistic, things are going well, but Lord, some are like Paul and Silas and they are in a tough place and they are sitting in circumstances that feel anything but ideal. And Lord, I pray that today you will put a song in their heart. Mm -hmm. Lord, that it would be a defiant song that declares in the face of adversity that you are still good, that we know you are good and everything you do is good, and that you are working all our circumstances out for our benefit. And so, Lord, I just pray that today when the enemy comes to whisper defeat and discouragement, that, Father, something would rise up inside of us that would declare with our lips the fruit of our lips giving thanks, knowing how good you are, and that, Father, that that would not only change our perspective, but it would, it would change the environment around us, Lord, mm -hmm. that it would change the atmosphere, mm -hmm. that it would cause our homes to be filled with light and life and hope Jesus. and that um, Lord I just pray specifically for homes that have felt like that there is this weight on them this spirit this darkness over their homes in the last few days or weeks Lord this heaviness I pray it would be gone in Jesus name Lord Amen. your word says we put on a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that when we lift praise, Father, that you lift that spirit of heaviness. And I pray that right now over every home that has felt a spirit of heaviness, that as praise is being lifted, Lord, that you would bring freedom right. and hope and lightness Amen. in Jesus' name. And that from today on, there would just be joy and that there would be hope that you have all things under control. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, so we have a few announcements. Um, first of all, we have youth group tonight. So if you have a teenager, we wanna make sure that you uh, get them involved. They have a great time where they watch a message together and they do some activities and have some, some Zoom call time. So make sure that you're connecting. Follow Homestead Youth on Instagram. That's a really great way to keep connected. Um, if you're not getting emails with the links, please uh, reach out to us and let us know so that we can make sure that your students have everything they need to jump on. So tonight at 6.30. Um, we want to let you know that you can give online. Thank you so much for your generosity in supporting Homestead. Uh, we know that in this season, it's, man, it's tough for, in a lot of different ways, but you've, you've continued to give. You've continued to be faithful to, to Homestead, and we're so grateful for that. Um, it allows our ministry to keep moving forward, our building projects to st keep moving forward. So thank you for your generosity. You can give online at homesteadcommunitychurch.org, um, or we have an app that's pretty easy to give to as well, or you can mail us a check, and yep. the address will be on at the end. You can mail a check if you want to send it. We'll get that and get that processed. We also want to let you know we have a generosity <laughs> I just saw the corner of my I'll eyes. Just put my hand up if I need to Your say mouth something. Your mouth opening. Um, we have a generosity fund um, that we have established during this time. We know people, a lot of people um, have some needs that are maybe different in this season of life than they've had in the past. And so if you would like to give to the generosity fund, we have a team of people that are working with our church members who might need a little extra help in this time. Um, so you can give to the generosity fund. And if you need some help, please reach out to us um, and we will have somebody from our generosity team contact you and see how we can meet needs. Jeff. Um, a lot of people will give through their online bill pay, through their bank. Uh, it helps save on some credit card fees. And so we get those. Um, and as Christy said, the address will be on the, the new church building address will be on the screen at the end. April was uh, a crazy month for a lot of people, but it was a, a strong giving month mm -hmm. for our church. Um, so I'm just letting you know that just to say thank you for um, your support and your generosity, but also it shows a lot of maturity of faith, mm -hmm. which I, which we really enjoy seeing of mm -hmm. your trust in God. You're still living um, faith-filled lives. And so thank you for that. We had a good, uh, a good general fund offering, a lot of money given towards the generosity fund and the building fund mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that. That's all. Christy. 
Um, we also want to let you know that we still have some Bibles available. So if you need a Bible, maybe you have a Bible, maybe you don't have a Bible, maybe you have a Bible and it's kind of an old translation, um, we would love to bless you with the Bible. So please uh, let us know. And when, I, when we say let us know, you can message Homestead on Facebook, send a messenger. We'll, we'll get all those things. Um, let us know if you need a Bible. We also have uh, teenage, teen, teens, Bibles, teens, teens, Bibles. Bibles for the teenagers. And children as and well. And children. Children's Bibles. And we know you know how to get a hold of us because you get a hold of us when you want us to share your Facebook post or when you want us to hear your opinions about the election okay. or about the coronavirus. <laughs> you have a way of getting the word out, so well, why maybe not? maybe they didn't know. Right. Okay. I'm just saying, you have, the, you have the means. Okay. So let us know if we can get you a Bible. Um, and just to let you know, we're going to show our awesome kids toy box theater videos at the end here. So if you missed it at the beginning, we had a couple families that put together their, their kids did their own toy box theater and we're super proud of them. So we're going to show them at the end here as well. And we'll be showing more. We have more for the next couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. um, if you would like to get your kids involved in that, reach out to Stephanie King. And she'll get you the list of uh, topics we're doing, and we'll put those in at the beginning and the end of service. So from here, we're going to show the uh, address screen for 10 seconds. And get then, your pens. And then we're going to our own Big Top Kids, Big Top Kids Toy Theater. So God bless you. Have a wonderful week. week. That's yeah. what I was trying to say. Yeah. All right. Okay. Now we're going to mute so mute. we don't talk. And I'm going to hit this button. It's still not muted. It's still not muted. We're going to talk over at homesteadcommunitychurch.org. No. <laughs> Mute. We did such an awesome job at church today. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make out. Okay. Let's try it one more time. Go back there. Okay, here you go. Say, ready, action. Ready, action. They grabbed Paul and Silas and dragged them to the marketplace. Uh, 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 uh. They brought them before the judges and accused them for causing disturbance in the town. were stripped and beaten and thrown in prison. Jailer was told to guard, told to guard them carefully. I will guard you very carefully. They were put into the inner cell and their feet were fastened in the stocks. But even in prison, Paul and Silas sang, praise to God. It is well, it is Their trust, their trust was in the Lord, in Lord God. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing. Praise. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. Singing praise to God from their prison cells. The other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, a violent earthquake shook the foundation of the prison. And the doors flew open and all the chains came loose. The jailer woke up <gasps> and when he saw the doors, the doors open, he was so afraid that his prisoner had escaped that he 
took out his sword and was, a, and was about to kill himself. Whoa. Just in time, Paul shouted. We're all still here. Don't hurt yourself. The jailer called for lights. hurried into Paul and Silas. He brought them out of their cells and asked that and asked a very important question. Believe uh sirs, what must I do to be saved? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved was Paul's reply. Paul and Silas explained to the jailer and his family the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, and they all believed and were baptized. One day while Paul and Silas were preaching, you should follow Jesus! He is the Savior! An angry mob came and wanted to throw them in, in jail. Go to jail! Yeah, go to jail! Go to jail! We want you in jail! No one cares about Jesus! So they got sent to jail. Oh! Guys, come with me. Get into your cell. When they got into prison, they sang hymns and they prayed. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Thank you, Lord, for all you have done. After they were done praying, there was a giant earthquake who shut the doors and opened them. Their handcuffs came right off. Everyone ran out. Whoa! Been ah! in here for two years. See ya, suckers. Freedom! When the soldier saw that all his prisoners were gone, he was about to cut off his head. Oh, no! Mm. Wait! Wait! What? Huh? What? Don't cut your hat off! But they're gonna kill me if I... They're gonna kill me that I let all the prisoners loose! No, they won't! Bring me back to your house, and we'll talk there. Okay. I told you I brought them back for dinner. They told him about Jesus and his family. Who's Jesus? You should follow him. He's the person who saved my life. Really? Can I meet Jesus? All you have to do is say you're a believer and follow Jesus for the rest of your life. Yeah, it's that simple. Jesus really? is great. Really? Yeah, it's that easy. Okay. Would you guys like to get baptized? Yeah! Can I go first? Can I go first? Yes. Let's get baptized. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Yes, I do, with all my heart. Okay, let's get baptized. You are now baptized. Would you like to get baptized? Yes! Yes, please. I'd love to get baptized. Do you believe in Jesus with all your heart? Yes, yes. Yes, I do. Now you're ready to get baptized. Yes.
You are now baptized. Yes! I'm baptized! Good. One more time. And that's a wrap. And that's a wrap.